Ladies and gentlemen, I am Israel. The date is the 7th of July 2014, and welcome once again to the Tribble Time Warp. I mentioned in the last episode that the Odyssey uniform was now free of charge to all players. As it happens, it's now also the default for new captains as well as bridge officers, and there are a couple of variants that are freely available, so let's start with the tailor for this episode. So we have the basic Odyssey uniform. This is the one that's been the fleet uniform prior to 9.5 and is now freely available. 200 day veterans gain access to the Odyssey long jacket. This adds a waist extension as well as division stripes at the wrists. The com badge by the way is the Odyssey 2 variant of memory serves. Let's just check that. Yep, there we are, Odyssey 2. And it's essentially an outline version of the, I think that's the Voyager era badge. They basically hollowed out the Starfleet Delta and presumably somehow packed all the electronics into the mere outline. Bit skeletal for my taste, but hey ho, no arguing that. Interestingly, this version doesn't have the problem that some com badges do of conforming to the player character's torso, mostly thanks to the horizontal bar. Division stripes, as I said before, are a welcome addition. They stop the uniforms being monochrome below the shoulders, and the belt is as per the standard Odyssey. On the subject of the belt, the loops here can be adjusted in colour to match the tunic, so it cannot be made to look as though the belt is feeding through loops in the tunic rather than simply sitting on the waist. Or if you're feeling completely outlandish, you can just have it in some indescribable colour and make it clear that colour coordination was not your captain's chief concern, or for that matter, yours. The Odyssey Tactical version is purchasable from the Fleet Starbases. This is one of the variants replacing the Fleet Uniform, and it's essentially a more form-fitting version of the Odyssey. You can also see that it's got different contouring and panels cut in, almost looking in a way as though it's got very thin and very light padding and armour sections on the front torso. The trousers are also different, as are the boots. Let's just pull the uniform window for a second. You can see here that I have Odyssey Tactical feet and Odyssey Tactical belt and lower legs. Again, monochrome below the shoulder, sadly. It would be nice to have the option to add wrist stripes as an accessory. Again, just to keep a bit of colour going on there. The belt itself is also stripped down. There's no decoration on the buckle this time. The badge itself is the Odyssey 1 variant. It loses the horizontal bar behind the delta, hollows it out as before. Perhaps a little more obviously not quite conformed to the torso, but hey, that's metal and this is the tunic is fabric. The big problem, however, with this uniform at the moment is that the colour batching on the boots really doesn't fit with the trousers at present. And before you ask, yes, the feet are on I1. Let's just make the point here. And the lower belt is likewise on I1. They really ought to be showing us the same colour. And they so very, very aren't. I'm not sure quite what has happened there. Finally, we have the Odyssey Dress Tunic, and this tunic on its own is also available from the Fleet Starbase of Memory Serves, 6.8k Dilithium and about 4.8k in Fleet Credits. This is a modernised version of the Wrath of Khan uniform. You can see the basic Wrath uniform here. This has been around for a while, and as I have said on several occasions, until now, Wrath uniform is best uniform. I might have to reconsider slightly, however, because they've mashed up the Odyssey long tunic and the Wrath uniform to produce something that's not too shabby by way of a dress uniform. Colour scheme, of course, did initially come by default next-gen style. I've just modified it over to try to get it a bit closer to the Wrath, including adding in the Wrath era com badge. A couple of interesting features on this jacket. First off, the belt is a separate item, Odyssey dress. 
It's going to be a little hard to show this because the zoom insists on focusing on the player character's head. However, if you get this right, and then I start mucking with the colour options, you'll see the first thing that perhaps needs to be changed. So, third colour option is the background. You'll also notice it's changing the colour of the Starfleet Delta as well. Fourth colour option is the rim of the buckle. I'd perhaps be happier to have the delta either as a separate option or to have it meshed in with the buckle edging rather than the securing plate if only to give us a gold on silver option there. Additionally the belt loops, let's just bring these up for a second, with all the will in the world they're not quite colour matching to the tunic under default lighting not sure whether that's purely a lighting thing or whether it's actually a color issue however if we pick for a th a three here you can see the dark red we've got then let's scroll up double check that the main jacket is also on a three yeah you can see there the belt loops are noticeably a couple of shades deeper than the back and indeed the front of the jacket under direct light in addition, the belt loop here is also overlapping with the gold trim, which is a bit of a no-no. Maybe that needs to be pulled forward a bit in the belt loops. In fact, pulled forward symmetrically, so it looks like the belt loops are on the front panel of the jacket, rather than directly above a fastener and a fairly major seam. Right, the shoulder fastener. This is the principal nod to the Wrath uniform. You can see that the fastening is offset and uses the shoulder clasp to keep it secured. Basic colour is all monochrome, so you can have division colour if you so wish. Or if you're going for the Wrath look, just go for white because that's what command officers wore. Trim, again, separate colour, controlled across the entire uniform as you choose no metallic options here you're going to have to rely on the reflections built into the jacket itself as well as some creative choices of color if you want gold or silver trim there additionally it's going to apply across the entire jacket so make sure you pick something you like the look of the front securing pin can be altered as well we've got several upper options here so odyssey dress Basic just uses a simple hexagonal pin. Command gives you the star symbol. Operations gives you the engineering. And of course, sciences gives you the eye that's used. So depending on your tastes, you can actually reflect your character's division while still retaining the classic red jacket if you're going for the modernized wrath look. If I've got one complaint about this shoulder fastener, it's actually round at the back namely that it doesn't line up with the shoulder stripe. This, I think, would be better off moved up a touch, so it's in line with the white banding across the shoulder, and perhaps a bit of detail added at the back here to make it look like a fastener of some kind is present. If I bring up the Wrath uniform, you can see that we've got this silver fastener here as per the movie jacket. It just looks like it's properly pinned to the jacket instead of floating on top and glued in place. However, that's a fairly minor criticism, it has to be said, on what is a very, very nice jacket and what might actually woo me away from the Wrath uniform. I'll also note that it might be interesting as an option to have coloured stripes down the sides of the trousers as per, without having to resort to the Wrath style tucked in trousers. In addition, if memory serves, you could actually use the Odyssey style long trousers with the Wrath uniform if we have these stripes because I'm pretty sure in at least some of the movies the trousers weren't tucked into the boots but that's just me. The Klingons have their own variations on these uniforms I will tackle those later when I can actually get a Klingon into a triple fleet and get access to the uniforms but the Odyssey and Odyssey tactical uniforms might perhaps benefit from their wrist stripes the Odyssey Long's not too shabby at all as a duty uniform, and the Odyssey Dress, well, if you want to really go retro, that's probably your best choice at the moment. Congrats to whichever costume designer came up with those. 
they are a significant improvement on the old Sierra jackets, which could probably be safely retired and very few people would care. Moving back on to research and development, and cross your fingers because the duty officer window still has a tendency to crash the game. Yay, it didn't do it. Okay, so rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Cryptic have cut the prices of dilithium components, so it's now down to 5,000 where it was 15, and 1,000 where it was 5. So we're now looking at about 6,000 dilithium for a random punt on, say, a Mark 12 beam array. Let's just double check that. Confirm. Yep, there we go. One chip and one circuit, so 6,000 dilithium. They have also said that the skill curve is known to be out of whack, so the residual numbers that I had a couple of episodes back that were showing a significant chance of poor quality results at high level skills, those are no longer valid, or at least hopefully they will not be valid by the time it all hits holodeck. Moving on again, we have also got a new filter here. Gear that you cannot craft can be filtered out, so you can go for purely the components you need. That's definitely worth having. In addition, they've addressed my big concern back in the first video that new characters were going to be locked out of the system by a lack of R&D officers. You now have the emergency research and development holograms and these are dotted around the divisions. Give me a moment just to find one of them for you. Where are you? Where are you? Here we are, emergency R&D hologram. You'll see that he is bound to the character and he has no usable traits whatsoever. These guys cannot be sent upon missions, they cannot be killed, they cannot be exchanged, they cannot be fed into a doff grinder, I hope. Basically, they are intended as a more or less idiot-proof way of getting new characters into the R&D system. That unlocks at level 15 as things stand, and ensuring that existing characters who will get these holograms free of charge will be able to get into the system at at least a basic level while they build up their duty officer roster and their engineering core. Critically, we have got a fabrication engineer, if I can find him. In addition, players who have maxed out on the old general R&D skill, the 1500 point grind, you will be happy to hear that we are getting a free officer. And if I can find him in a second... Where did you go? It's a Ferengi, I should add. Um, bu -bu 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 -bum. We don't as yet have the sub-specializations for things like the Aegis system requirements. So, Ferengi duty officers. Here we are, Gumare. He is the Aegis officer that we will be getting free of charge. As because he's not got a bad set of components and his passive ability isn't too shabby either. 5% chance to reduce cooldown on shield heals when activating science team. So if you're running a heavy shield heal build, he might be worth slotting. Might be. However, his traits are to I find it hard to believe that this guy is going to stay at white quality somehow. I think he's going to get an upgrade at some point. So that set of traits makes him very, very handy indeed. Why are we interested in him? Because he is now required, or at least a counterpart is required, to build anything in the Aegis set. Let's just scroll down, pull it up. We need an Aegis Covariant Shield Array. These are now Shield School level 15, so it's going to be a fair old grind before you can build one of these if you haven't got it already. Two emitter arrays and one signal enhancement module. Let's scroll down. That's 7,000 dilithium for what is a guaranteed Mark 12 shield. Aegis Mark 12 basic. This is now Mark 12 covariant, so capacity has had a bit of a boost. The old adaptive shielding perk is now as standard on the shields array, so you've got that. And you have the new abilities that we discussed last time, as well as a bit of a boost to shield power. 
The ultra rare variant, how is that different? Um, good question, I don't know. I'm going to have to do a lot of grinding or hope that Cryptic put it in as a secondary. Much the same goes for the Aegis Deflector and Hyper Impulse sets. They have likewise been added and standardised at Mark 12. Has this been retroactive? Um, hmm, that's an interesting question. Well, they certainly are at Mark 12 numbers if not displaying the actual Mark 12. But as you can see, 5% bonus defence and... Significant little boost there, plus five shield power. Aegis is very definitely going to be making a comeback in season 9.5, but we've covered that before. So, ladies and gentlemen, I've been rambling for a while now. As I say, I hope to be able to show the new Borta school uniforms at a future date, as well as get some teeth into some of the new shinies. But until that happy, happy time rolls around, I have been Israel, that has been the Triple Time Warp, and farewell.